uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans of his earthlings, if you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to channel. I'm Bushkin. Today we're going to be talking about, well, a couple of things, because I'm a multifaceted entertainer. I like to talk about the tactical side of stuff. We're going to talk about side scraping and angling your tank correctly, because you should be. We're going to talk about things not to do, well, only one thing, like this. Remember not to repair your broken track with your fire extinguisher because then you're going to get set on fire. <laughs> I did it on purpose so I'd have some content. You feel me, bro? This is the E75. Um, I drove this on stream last week uh, because someone said, try the E75. And I'm like, oh, it's probably been power crept. And I drove it on stream and decided it has uh, not been power crept and it's still an absolutely glorious freaking heavy tank. And it reminds me about so much about the game that I love, um, which is angling and side scraping and knowing what you're going to be doing and the other tanks, what they're going to be doing. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and we're going to try and make the bog standard ordinary human a better tanker. We're also going to talk a little bit about the E75 standard Panzer. Now this was actually meant to be, uh, it was part of a prototype series built towards the end of the war, the E series, like the E25, E50, E100. Yeah, feeling me, the Yag. Yeah, Yag Panzer E100, the all kinds of things, right? Uh, but this was meant to be the tank that replaced the Tiger II um, and the Yag Tiger. This this was going to be built and be the new stock standard German monster tank, right? This is going to be the one. But it was a big bootied heavy. And uh, one of the things that it struggled with in real life, or I mean, it was not a real life tank, but one of the things it was going to struggle with was... It's movement, it's mobility, and that's something that definitely comes through in the game. And getting back towards the game a little bit, it used to be much, much worse to grind the E75. There were originally three engines on the E75, and grinding the first two was absolutely painful. Um, it was the slowest, most... It was just horrific. Anyway, it got better. Let's talk about what it does well. It does this well side scrapey mix side scrapers and little movements giving him very very flat auto bounce angles because the e75 has what we might call a booty that is both wide thick luxurious and very difficult to penetrate the 75 is basically a slightly angled box with a very sharp pointy bit on the front and the sides you can also see they slope inwards uh, almost like they're a triangle that's been cut off, a very, very tall triangle that's been cut off. Um, and those sides are 120 millimeters thick. That is a crazy amount. And just looking at the tank flat, the front upper plate is 160 millimeters. The lower plate is 130 millimeters. So just looking at the tank front on without any angling whatsoever, your upper plate's 330 and your lower plate's 237. Watch how well this thing can just angle and, and jiggle. And even when you're not expecting to get bounces, sometimes it just gives you bounces from tanks that you didn't know were firing at you because it is legitimately a nasty piece of work. The turret itself is also 160 millimeters thick on the sides and your gun, well, it doesn't really have a gun mantlet, but the, the plate around the gun, you're looking at 250 millimeters, 252 millimeters. So this is a tank that really, really, really wants to angle. Um, you can angle this thing up tremendously and get massive, massive numbers. The pen numbers on the tank are well worth knowing. And there's something else that is a little bit of a, a hat tip here. The hatch is on the left-hand side. So you always try and side scrape with the right side of the tank, if possible, when you're facing tanks with seriously massive amounts of penetration. But... You can leave this at a, a jaunty angle, uh, just a slight angle, drawing shots and jinking shots, and you've got like 600 millimeters of side armor when you're doing that. It's absolutely crazy. And the E75 has never had any problems with its armor profile. Uh, and I have obviously not played a lot of it for a long time, but I jumped back in it and won absolutely everything. It was, it has no problems being tiered up. Um, this is a game we lost. <laughs> and it's a game that I just kind of wanted to see what would happen if I just 
went, hello, ball's out. Let's have a YOLO and see what goes on without any support. Um, I did actually get some support here, but I missed a whole heap of shots. It's, it's a my problem, but the angles are crazy. Eventually, obviously, you can't angle to everyone, but I mean, I have just bounced four or five shots right away, just going right down the guts in the heavy line. I have taken up all, and the 252U is like, I'm going to shoot at that Shamira because he's just, he's more fun to shoot at. And I'm going to take another one here because I'm desperate to get this bloke. Oh, no, I don't. I, eh, eh, whatever. Like, this is tough as nails. This tank is absolutely tough as nails. I'm getting shot from behind. Obviously, you can't angle to things behind you. But have a look at this thing. Like, it's just... It's gun is horrible. <laughs> that is something we should talk about. We really should talk about the gun because the gun is legitimately terrifying. Um... Before we get to the gun, though, I want to say a couple of things about side scraping. Side scraping or angling is the act of hiding your weak points and only showing the strong points of your tank. So it's very difficult for you to be penetrated. Not all tanks are as strong as the E75, obviously, but there is always an optimum angle. Some tanks, it's just not worth even trying. Other tanks... If you know your optimum angles, you can be really, really successful. There's overmatch mechanics, auto bounce zones. You're not getting overmatched on the E75, right? That is not what's going to be happening. The E75 is not going to overmatch you. Uh, give you overmatch. <laughs> this has been crazy. I just drove into the middle of all these tanks and basically broke their face, broke their fists with my face, and it worked. <laughs> but we lose this game. But it's just whatever like the gun is the only thing that has let me down here just tremendously so too it really has um where was i yeah the gun um the gun is kind of interesting it's you've got four guns on this tank you've got two tier eight guns a tier nine gun and a tier 10 gun and the tier 10 gun has 246 millimeters of ap pen 311 millimeters of apcr uh the dpm is horrible uh, 2,231 DPM uh, per minute. The actual best DPM gun on the tank is the tier 8 gun, but don't use that because it's got a maximum pen of 265 and you're going to end up facing tier 10 tanks. The tier 9 gun, the 10.5 centimeter KWK L68, its top pen is 285 and you're going to need the 311 millimeters of pen at times. And to be honest, you're not a DPM machine. You never will be. Um, your best DPM is 2,500 with a tier 8 gun. No, just use the tier 10 gun, the 12.8 centimeter KWK K44 L55. Now, this tank is 460 alpha because it's a 120 millimeter gun. And 460 alpha is perfect. That's what you want. You want 460 alpha. That's just, just grand. Uh, and this is the way you want to play it. You want to stick it in the front line and you want to draw shots from other tanks you want to angle your tank up so you're always jiggling it so that upper and lower glacis is turning from green to red um the lower glacis rather that's three shots on me two bounces move back in set up a side scrape on this angle the tanks that precede this in the line are one of the reasons why i love the e75 if you can play the tiger one uh which is a glorious tank that I absolutely love. The gun is brilliant. It is nowhere near as soft as people think it is. Um, you can angle it and be much, much happier than you'd think. Uh, if you can play the Tiger 1, you are going to become a very good side scraper. If you can play the Tiger 2, which is excellent um, and has been buffed, then you'll be really great at side scraping and angling your tank. Then you get to the E75, and the E75 is just ridiculously good. It's, in some respects, even better than the E100 because the turret is so much easier to hide than the E100's turret. You don't have the spaced armor on the side that the E100 has, but you're not as big as a house either. You're obviously not as intimidating offensively, but defensively, this is a pocket package compared to the E100. But both the tanks, the whole line, in fact, is about angling and side scraping. And there's a Lerva, a very German tank. Uh, we are blocked nearly 3,000 damage already. Yeah, there we go. 3,470 damage blocked so far. We've basically just held their whole flank. We've made it 
nearly impossible for them to advance around here. Sure, it's cost us some hit points, but this is how you play the game. And we're now even on tanks. Every heavy tank that came this way has bounced shots on me. Every heavy tank. The Lerva, the K91, the IS-3 Defender, they've all had to bounce shots. And despite the limited mobility and the low DPM of a tank like the E-75, it excels at being this damage sponge, just soaking up all the crap. When you're in tier 10 games, you have to play it a little less aggressively than this. You know, there's a lot of 350, 380 millimeter heat shaggers out there. You've got 400 millimeter guns out there, like your Jaegerus, your Ho Rees. Those are guns that can hurt you. But when you come up against tier eight tanks, it's not such a great big deal. You can really be aggressive and dominate. And this is a tier nine Jag Tiger there, and there's an M103. So we're going to have to angle towards him. And this is really such a fun tank to drive in these situations because you can do a whole hell of a lot with a lot less hit points. Um, I would also strongly suggest if you ever come up against an E75, try to get to its flank. If people are smart with you and they start working angles towards the flank of the tank um, so that they force you to angle to multiple targets at once, your traverse is such that you probably won't be able to keep up with it. And I just used my fire extinguisher again. Ah, I'm never going to learn. Yag Tiger down here, last bike left alive. And we've really not done a huge amount of damage. But we're going to come away, I think it's with about 5k blocked. There's 3,600. No, we're going to get another block? I don't think we are. I think it's it's just about 4k maybe, I don't know. Oh yeah, 4,800. Pretty close to 5k. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm Bushka. Remember to like the video, subscribe, look after yourself, stay safe on the battlefield. And bye for now. Rawr.